much for being here tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll ask God to bless us this evening. If you'd help me, please. Let's pray together. Our dear Father, we come tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank Thee for the opportunity we have here to gather. What a blessing it is to be with God's people. I pray for Thy grace and mercy to be upon us here this evening. I pray that the Lord would guide us and direct our steps. And I sure thank You, my Father, for letting us assemble once more. Thank You for the people of God. Thank You for the beautiful day. We thank Thee for the time now to worship our Lord together as a church family. We ask that Christ be honored and let our hearts be stirred. Thank you for giving us a wonderful time this morning. And we ask thy blessing here tonight. And we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you find that hymn book please and turn with me to hymn number 657, would you? Find that hymn book, please, and turn to 657. And then when you find your hymn number, please stand with me, if you will. 657, I once, I was once a sinner, but I came, pardon to receive from my Lord. 657, a new name in glory. Let's sing it together. 657. <laughs> On the first, I was once a sinner. and turn it with me to hymn 25. Hymn number 25, I don't know if y'all remember, but all the way back, probably about a year and a half ago now, when we first started doing the unfamiliar hymns, this was the very first one we did, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, hymn number 25. You may not recognize the lyrics, but I guarantee you're going to recognize the tune, hymn 25. On the first, Joy.
Thank you so very much. May God bless you. And um, notice with me a couple of things, please, if you will, before we receive the offering tonight. Let me mention a couple of brief things. One is that on May the 5th, I want you to circle that date and be praying, if you will, about our upcoming spring meeting as the Keter family will be joining us. And we're looking forward to having them. And Brother John Keter, that's that's the senior. And then his son, Kevin Keter, Kevin Keter will be here with us and their family. Looking forward to having them. And uh, Brother Kevin is down in South Carolina as an assistant to the pastor there. And of course, Brother Keeter, he's been a longtime friend of ours and looking forward to him being with us as well. And there'll be alternating days. We'll have Brother John Keeter preaching and Brother Kevin Keeter and be going back and forth throughout the days. And so we're looking forward to that. May 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. It'll be exciting. So you'll be praying about it, if you will, please, all right? As well as the different dates and the activities you see listed in your bulletin. And I want you to be praying and let's be working at it all, all right? Very good. Let's receive the offering tonight, if we may. Let's receive the offering and be faithful, our tithes and our offerings. And God bless you as we do. And we thank, we thank the Lord for what He's given to us. All right? Good. Brother James, lead us in prayer of the offering, please. Dear Father, God, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, God, for the many blessings to us. God, we thank you for this, all that you've provided, Lord. We pray, God, that you would bless this offering. God, would you lead me through this morning? Pray, God, that you just continue to bless this church, Lord. Please. God, that you bring it up, and God, that we would serve you more here, Lord. God, we pray tonight, Lord, that you bless the service, bless the preacher. God, just speak to us tonight. Lord, we do love you, and we do thank you. Let's give you the same Amen. 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 turn over with me to hymn 619. This is going to be the unfamiliar hymn for tonight. It's more of an unfamiliar chorus, um, but I, I've heard it before. I know probably some of y'all have heard it before. There's something about that name, hymn 619, and as she plays through it, she's going to be playing through it. You can stand up, shake some hands tonight, make everybody feel welcome, all right?
wonderful. Thank you so much. I want you to have your hymn book open to hymn 619, that chorus. There's something about that name. How many of you know this? How many of you know this? Several folks. How many of you maybe have heard it or you're just not familiar with it? Any takers on that? A few not take. That's all right. That's fine. That's what Sunday night is for. We're learning unfamiliar hymns. And so this is a wonderful chorus. I have, I, I've been familiar with this for many years and I'm glad we're doing it. So come on, Will, if you would please and lead us in the chorus, would you? Hymn 619 there, there's something about that name. Since it sounds like most, some of the people have actually heard this song, we're just going to jump right in without a practice run, all right? Everybody sing out with me. Jesus. isn't it? How many, of you, how many of you know tonight there is something about that name, isn't there? There is indeed, and we, we give God glory for that. Thank the Lord tonight for His love and favor. How many of you glad to be saved tonight? Yes, amen. And what a blessing it is to know the Lord. Very good. Um, good. Let me mention to you, if I may, please, um, one thing we need to do around here, we've been needing to do for some time, and if it'd be all right, something we'd like to get, kind of get working on, a little small project, but our men's bathroom right up here is in dire need of a little upgrade, a little maintenance, a little care, and... Um, you know, I don't want to be graphic about it or nothing like that, but it just it needs it just needs an overhaul, needs to be upgraded. And so, God willing, if it'd be all right, we're gonna try to fix that, and spruce that up here, try to get that done before we have our spring meeting and before Mother's Day and all of that, and uh, just try to spruce it up a little bit and work at it. So we're actually going to try to extend it, make it a little bigger, and then of course it'll be fresh and doors bigger, you know, be more handicap accessible. That's one thing that I feel like is so important for us to do. Anytime we upgrade around here, we have to do those kinds of things. And so anyway, if it be all right, that's what we're going to work on. We're going to try to get on that tomorrow and then, you know, work on it next several days and try to get things done as quickly as possible. Our goal is to have it done before May. So if you would, pray about it, if you would, please. And if you're available, we can use some help, all right? And that'd be a big help to us as we just try to try to get it done. 
done. But it's one of those that's kind of a necessity too, you know. And not only that, I know there's many others. Uh, I know our ladies' bathroom could use a little upgrading and different things around here. We'll work at it. We'll work at it. It's the elephant. You bite him one bite at a time, but we'll work at it all the way around. You know what I mean? How many of you ever do that kind of stuff around your house, you know? You just have to spruce up a little, tidy up, fix up, clean up, fix up, whatever. Good. We'll work at it. But if you have any questions about it, see Mr. Will. He's been helping on a lot of this as far as making some plans and things, and I appreciate that so very much. Um, good. And then one last word here I'll give you is I want our ladies to be reminded that, God willing, in April, April 25th, we're going to have our Thursday ladies meeting. And so I want our ladies to be aware of that, if they would, please. All right. And that'll be good. And my wife will be looking forward to having you at 630 on the 25th. I did not mention, it was an oversight, y'all forgive me, I make my mistakes, but um, I did not mention this morning a birthday, and I hope I haven't forgotten anybody, but there's one young man I know for a fact that we, we, mistake, we mistakenly overlooked this morning. His birthday is this week, it's Saturday as a matter of fact, and that is Mr. Eli sitting over there. Eli, wave at me. <laughs> How old are you going to be on your birthday? Four. Four. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Four years young. Happy birthday, Eli. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure your mom and daddy are going to get you a cake and all the goodies, right? Do you like cake? You do like cake. Do you like chocolate cake? You do like chocolate cake. <laughs> Good. Four years old. That's wonderful watching them grow up. Let's, can we sing a happy birthday song? Would that be all right? Let's sing a little bit. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Join with me. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Hard to believe. Four years old. That is hard to believe. But that's wonderful. Thank God for it. Amen. How many of you remember what you were doing when you were four years old? Having takers? <laughs> <laughs> Good. If you would please tonight, I'm going to ask you to take the good word of God and turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Proverbs, would you please? Proverbs chapter 14, if you will. Proverbs chapter number 14. A principle that is good for us to be reminded of from time to time. Proverbs chapter 14, if you would please. We're going to look together at one verse of Scripture. We'll look at a few others along the way, compare Scripture with Scripture a little bit here and there. But I do want you to note this one, if you would please, in Proverbs. And I trust you'll underline this verse and perhaps find you a piece of paper or the margin of your Bible or somewhere you can write down a little principle here, if you would, because it's one that will help us in life, it will help us in ministry, it will help us all the way around. And so let's find it together in Proverbs. The Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And God takes, think of this now, God takes eternal heavenly truths and He compacts them down into these little short statements. These little short uh, sentences or even a couple, of, even some of these are maybe uh, two or three verses long or maybe a little longer, but most of them are one verse and God takes eternal truths and boils them down into such a simple, simple way. And many of them are even in such descriptive ways it's easy to remember and understand. And it's wonderful as you dive into the good wisdom of God. Proverbs 14, please, if you would. And find with me verse number 4. Verse number 4. Verse number 4, if you, if you will. In Proverbs 14 and verse number 4, the Bible says, Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Let's read that one more time, please. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. 
I want you to note that with me, please. As God gives us a, a wonderful principle here. Now, just to kind of set the table for us. The Bible is teaching us that a wonderful principle here that imagine, if you will, that you are living on a farmland. And imagine, if you will, that you do not have expensive machinery. You do not have John Deere's available to you. You don't have any kind of, kind of heavy-duty equipment, anything like that. It's just you, all right? And here you are on a farm, and you, you know for your livelihood or for your own dinner table, you need something to eat. And so you're going to plant your field. Well, you can go out there and you can dig by hand if you wish, and you can plant by hand and try to do all that on your own, and you'll get a little something done, no doubt about it. If you work hard, you'll get a little something done. But how many of you believe with me that it would be a whole lot easier if you had an ox available? I mean, if you had a beast of bird, if you had an ox available, would that make it easier to do the work of planting and uh, of, um, of digging up the ground and plowing up the dirt? It would. Of course it would. But here's the problem with having an ox. Oxen, they require their own upkeep. I mean, if you're going to have an ox, you've got to have a place to put him, right? If you're going to have a place to put him, then, of course, he's going to do what barnyard animals do, and they're going to make a mess. I mean, that's just part of it. Of course, you've got to feed him. You've got to take care of him. If he gets lame or he gets sick, you're going to try to find out what's wrong. I mean, you want to use this animal, and you want his, his strength to help you. So you know that in order to have more increase, or as the Bible says here, much increase, you're going to need a good ox. You could do it by hand, but it's a whole lot better with an ox. Let me put it another way. If you're going to dig a ditch, how many of you would say that it's, it would be, I mean, you could go out there and you could dig a ditch with a shovel, but if you had a backhoe or something like that, it'd make it a whole lot easier, wouldn't it, with a piece of machinery, right? Or you could go out there and even by hand, if you really wanted to, you could try that. I wouldn't advise it, but you could try. But if you had a digging tool, if you had a shovel, if you have some heavy-duty machinery, it will help you get the job done. Now here's the thing, beloved. The Bible says here that if you don't have an ox, you'll have a clean crib. In other words, his stall will be clean. But if you want the increase of the ox, if you want the increase that he can bring, you're going to have to have an ox and you're going to have to deal with an ox. So here's what I want you to write down, would you please? Why don't we just look at it this way? Let's keep the ox and clean the crib. Keep the ox and clean the crib. And so in other words, you say, well, the ox is going to have his own problems. Fair enough. But if you, if you want what he can produce, you're going to have to have the ox. Well, if you say, well, I don't want to deal with the problems. Well, that's fine. Just get rid of the ox. Well, say, I don't want to get rid of the ox because I like the fact that the ox can help me get a better harvest. Well, if you want the ox, you're going to have to clean the crib. <laughs> if you want the ox, you're going to have to deal with the problems and the maintenance and the upkeep that the ox is going to bring. But, thank God, the ox will afford you more opportunity, more possibilities to get more of your fields worked and your farm work. So there's much increase by the strength of the ox. But if you want the ox, you're going to have have to learn how to clean the crib. How many of you know? How many of you know that just just doing stuff can cause things to happen, right? <laughs> just doing things. How many of you like having a comfortable house? We have any comfortable house people in here? You like having a place to live? Sure, you do. How many of you know those houses require maintenance? How many of you know those houses? They're going to require you're going to have to fix le leaky faucets. You're going to have to upgrade your water heater. You're going to have to fix a broken AC unit from time to time, or whatever the case is. I mean, just things happen. You're going to have something give out, something break down. It's just going to happen. And if you, but if you want the house, you're going to have to deal with the maintenance and the problems that come with having the house. But you say, well, I don't want the problems. Well, fine, just get rid of the house. <laughs> get rid of the house, you won't have any problems. You say, well, I'm not going to do that. Well, you're going to have to learn how to keep the ox 
and clean the crib. How many of you like driving cars? We have any car people in here or truck or something like that? Sure you do. How many of you know every now and again you're going to have a flat tire? Or you're going to have to change oil. Or you're going, you're, you're going to have to change a belt. You're going to have to fill it up with fluid. Or how about this? Ever so often, you got to run down there to the gas pump and fill it up with fuel, right? And every time you do that, you start praying and cringing, don't you, right? When you fill it up, you know? But the, pro the point is, if you like the fact that the car can get you different places and get you further down the road, and if you have to make a 30-mile journey or a 50-mile journey or a 100-mile journey or even more than that, you appreciate the fact that you've got a vehicle that can do the job, get you where you need to go, and let you get around town, live your life, etc., etc. But if you're going to have that, then you're also going to have to deal with fixing the car once in a while, too. If you're going to have an ox, you're going to have to clean the crib. If you're going, if you're going to have the increase of the ox, every now and again, you're going to have to clean the crib. If you're going to have the increase of the ox every now and again, you're going to have to get your shovel and you're going to have to scoop out the stall and clean the stall. Everybody with me on that? You're going to have to. Do we have any folks in here tonight? You know, you, you're very well acquainted with having to clean chicken coops. Do we have any folks like that? Yes. <laughs> Got a few, right? I mean, you say, well, I like my chickens and I like my eggs. Well, guess what you have to do from time to time? <laughs> you got to clean the coop, right? Well, if you're going to have the ox, you say, well, I like the fact that the ox can help me get a lot more planted and I get a lot more in the harvest. Great. But every now and again, you're going to have to take the shovel and you're going to have to clean the stall. If you don't want to clean the stall, just get rid of the ox. If you don't want problems in life, then don't do anything. But if you do things, once in a while, you're going to have to pick you up a shovel and clean the crib. Now, you know what's wonderful, though? You know what's wonderful? is the fact that we're talking here about farms and fruits and vegetables and things like that. But you know, there's a wonderful principle here that you and I, you and I get to be involved in the greatest work imaginable. I'm saying tonight that a farmer, he, he's got a purpose in mind. He wants to have the fruits and the vegetables. And so he'll take care of his farm and do what he has to do to make it happen. But you and I tonight, we're involved in the greatest work imaginable. The Lord Jesus Christ has left us a wonderful work. And so to accomplish that work, we're going to have to remember what it is every now and again to keep the ox and clean the crib. Let me show you something here, please. Would you take your Bible for a moment and turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 6, please? Would you turn there? Matthew chapter 6. Let me give you a few things about this matter. Keep the ox and clean the crib. I want you to consider this tonight that we have a purpose. There's a purpose here. A farmer's purpose is to get his fruits and vegetables. What's our purpose? Well, there's certainly nothing wrong with you working for a, li a living and a livelihood and having fruits and vegetables. But I'm speaking of something more important than even that. Look with me please at Matthew 6 and verse 20, where the Bible says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, whether, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. The Bible says, Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. The Lord Jesus said, Lift up your eyes and Look on the fields, for they are white already unto harvest. The Lord Jesus tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The Lord Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. What, what is he saying by all of this? The Lord is saying, You and and I are involved in the greatest work ever. You and I get to sign up for and be involved in the work of the Lord together. And thank God there's a purpose. What I'm trying to say here tonight, listen, I'm encouraging you and me tonight, let's invest our lives in eternal things. Let's invest our lives in things even more, even more valuable even than turning
turning over dirt and soil, but let's invest our lives in the work of the Lord, that the gospel might go forth, that people might be encouraged, that the name of Jesus might be made known. Let's invest our lives in what is eternal. How many of you with me tonight that you want to be a part of something bigger than this old earth? You want to be a part of things that are eternal, right? Lay up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. The Lord Jesus is teaching us. I mean, we can spend our lives laying up treasures on the earth, but they won't last. But you can invest your life in eternity. You and I have a purpose. Let me ask you a question. Have you, have you just chosen with all your heart, I'm just going to follow Jesus and I'm just going to serve the Lord? Have you chosen that? Just invest your life in eternity. How many of you remember when the Lord saved you? Are you glad you're saved tonight? How many of you glad you're saved tonight? I am too. I'll tell you what I'm thankful for tonight. I'm glad God saved me. I'm also glad for the fact that God used some people in my life who just invested their lives in eternity and God used that to make a difference in me. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying tonight, let's be a people who invest invest ourselves in more than just here today, let's invest our life in eternity. I've only got one life to live, brother. Only one. And I want it to count. And the way for it to count is invest your life in eternity. That is the purpose. Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Jesus said, let's go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the task before us. This is our purpose. We have a job to do. Just like the farmer would say, I have a job to do. I've got to get my fields planted. I've got work to do. Well, church, we've got a job to do. We are to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, bearing precious seed and bringing His gospel, loving and encouraging one another, sticking together, binding together as the church of God. We've got a purpose here before us. And frankly, we'll just say it this way, let's invest our lives in eternity. How about that? That's the purpose. All right. So we see we've got a job to do. There's the purpose. But the second thing is we're going to have problems. <laughs> that leads me back to that ox again and to the shovel in my hands. Because you see, again, the farmer likes the fact that the ox brings much increase. That's good. But the problem is, is that the ox is going to make his own mess too. He's going to have his own share of problems too. Again, the farmer's going to have to clean the crib once in a while because that's just the nature of the beast. That's just the nature of it. He's going, he's just going to, that's just, he's going to live. And so in order to have the ox, you're going to have to clean the crib. There's problems. How many of you know with me, please, that life has its problems too, right? Yes, it does. You know, some, some time ago, <laughs> I, I remember a dear fellow. He's a good man, and I love him. He's a friend of mine, and I love him. But a, a dear man, and every time I talked to him, he's pastor of another church somewhere, but every time I would talk to him, it always seemed like that he just had, and I don't, I don't know if I want to call it bitter. I don't know if I, that may be too strong of a word. I'm not sure. I'll have to leave that with the Lord. But it just seemed like there was always a, a complaint. And it was always, well, this isn't going right, or that's not going right. And even, some, even oftentimes complaining about the precious people he was pastoring, and, you know, they're not doing this, they're not doing that, and on and on and on it goes. And I, I, feel like, I feel like God's helped him through a lot of that, and God's been doing a work in his heart and getting him through all that and, and moving on. But you know something, here's, here's the thing. I, I think to myself when I hear things like that, I think to myself, I, I want to remember that anytime you do something worthwhile, it's going to have its problems. But just don't let it make you bitter. And don't let it make you sullen. Just remember that life just means if you want the ox, you just going to have to clean the crib. No reason to get upset about it. But just say, you know what? That's just something I got to do. And we just keep the ox and we clean the crib. And so I'm just trying to encourage you tonight that life, yes, will have its problems. Do we have any computer people in here tonight? Anybody work with computers? Anybody do that? Anybody use one on occasion or anything? Well, if you've worked with one long enough or if you've used one long enough, here's what's going to happen eventually. 
it's going to slow down and it's going to be so mega slow that it just gets you ill because you're trying to do something and you feel like you're spending more time waiting on the thing than you are doing something. Or worse yet, you're working on a project, like if you're in school or something, type in a 10-page long essay and you're working on a piece of, on a paper or something of that nature. I've had to do those, you know, things like that. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, here comes that blue screen that crashes everything. You lose it all and you just think to yourself, why? <laughs> Well, here's the point. Here's the problem. Here's the point. If you don't want to have problems with it, just get rid of the computer. But if you like the fact that you can do things with it and you need to do things with it and it helps you do things and get things done, you're just going to have to keep the ox and you're just going to have to keep clean the crib. How many of you, how many of you, now I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being cruel when I say this, I'm just trying to be a little lighthearted tonight, but listen, how many of you appreciate your beautiful children, right? <laughs> and all their joy. How many of you also know that every now and again they might make you feel like you're going to pull your hair out, right? <laughs> but aren't you glad you've got them? Sure, I hope you I hope you are. That's a good place to say amen, you know. I hope you're glad you've got them. The point is, is life has its problems. By the way, the Lord's work also has its problems too, doesn't it? It does. The Lord's work has its problems. I mean, you know, we, we could we could just kind of say, you know, well, listen. I don't like that our building, it's a beautiful building, a lovely building, but you know, sometimes the roof leaks on occasion or something, you know, every now and again stuff like that happens. You know, we had, I remember one Sunday night, some months back, heavy rainstorm, and we're, I've had, we had to put a bucket out somewhere because the roof was leaking, and that means you call the insurance man, and you get all that straightened out. It's just part of it. Somebody said, well, I wish we didn't have to deal with all that. Well, here's a simple solution. Just get rid of the building. <laughs> I said, no, we're not going to get rid of the building. Well, then every now and again, we're going to have to deal with a leaky roof, or we're going to have to patch a hole, or we're going to have to paint a wall, or we're going to have to fix this, or maintenance that. It's just part of it. You know what I mean? Because that's just the nature of the world in which we live. Here's the answer though. Keep the ox. Don't get rid of the ox. The ox will help you. Just go ahead and roll up your sleeves every once in a while and clean the crib. Just clean the crib. Keep the ox. Clean the crib. I'm afraid there's many people and I'm talking about in terms of the Lord's work. Many people who, who, who may decide, or I'm not talking about in here, I just mean in general, but many people who may, may decide, maybe it's just not worth it. The old locks ain't worth it anymore. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That old ox is worth it because he can help you, right? But if you're going to have the ox, you're going to have to clean the crib, you see. And that means somebody's just going to have to pick up a shovel and clean the crib. That's just the nature of it. So the problems we face, I had a man years ago come to me, well he was visiting here, he was a preacher I'd, I had invited to come, he's a good man, and I mean no, all, no harm toward him, but this has been probably ten years ago, and I'd been here maybe two or three years at the time, and he come here, and uh, he and I were talking privately, and he said to me, he said, how long you been here? And I said, well I've been here, I don't know, with, Two years, three years, whatever it was. I've been here like two years. And uh, he said, y you enjoying it? I said, yes, I am. I I'm grateful. I love, I love what God's given me to do. And I'm thankful. He said, well, that won't last. That's what he told me. It didn't sit well with me. I mean, now he was older than I, and so I'm not going to jump all over him and rebuke him and that type of thing, but it just didn't sit well with my heart. But I tell you, I never have forgotten that. But I can tell you this, beloved, 10 years later, I'm still enjoying. I thank God for what he's given me to do. You know what I'm saying? Now, does that mean that every once in a while that you or I or anybody in anything in life or anything we do, that you're not going to look around and say, you know, there's an old dirty stall over there, and I don't know what we're going to do with that thing. It's just going to happen. But you know what we can do? Let's just be happy in Jesus. Thank God for what he's blessed us with. Thank God for what we have. Thank God for buildings that we have and opportunities that we have. And if, we, if the old stall needs cleaning, roll up your sleeves, clean the stall, keep the ox, clean the crib, and be happy that God has given us work to do for his name's sake. Right? That's the way it should work. So yes, there's problems. But thank God we have a heavenly purpose. Now the third thing is that there is a price to pay. 
There is a price to pay. And that's what we've been dealing with all night. But if you don't want to pay the price of the upkeep of the ox, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. And then you won't have the burden of the ox anymore. You won't, you won't have to worry about ever picking up a shovel and cleaning, af cleaning up after him. But if you want the ox, you're going to have to clean the crib. That's just the way it works. If, if, we, if, we want, if we want to do things, if we want to do things for the Lord, if we want to reach souls for Christ, then we're just going to have to clean the crib when it's dirty from time to time. If we say, you know what, it's a good thing, let's try to pick up boys and girls on a church bus or a van or something like that and bring them to Jesus, fine, but you're going to have to fill it with gas. You're going to have to maintenance it. You're going to have to upkeep it. It's just going to happen. You're going to have to have laborers. All of that is just par for the course. You say, well, I don't want that. Well, then get rid of it. But I'm, I believe this. Rather than getting rid of the ox, let's keep the ox and let's just clean the crib, right? Somebody says, you know what, I'd love to, let's have a, let's have a wonderful choir. And by the way, thank God for folks who sing in the choir. That's right, but I'll tell you something, if you're going to have it, you're going to have to give up time to practice. You're going to have to give up time in it. That's just part of it. But if you want it, that's just the way it works. You know what, beloved? Let's keep the ox. Let's clean the crib. So we appreciate our beautiful boys and girls. We want to have a wonderful children's ministry and reach boys and girls for Jesus and love on them and make them feel like they're the most important people on the, on the face of the earth and just love them for Jesus. I say amen goes right there. But I'll tell you what's going to come along with that from time to time too. You're going to have to fix a hole in the wall. You're going to have to paint over something where somebody's uncolored it with a crayon. You know what? That's quite all right. Just keep the ox and clean the crib. And you know what happens when you keep the ox? There's much increase by reason of the ox, by the strength of the ox. There is a price to pay. There's no doubt about it. Somebody says, I don't like dealing with neighbors. Well, get rid of your neighbors. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just get rid of them. <laughs> just, just sing a little jingle, you know? Like a good neighbor, stay over there. <laughs> you know? But... <laughs> But <laughs> if you're going to have opportunity to love on them, encourage them, then every now and again you might have to put up with some aggravation. I don't know. <laughs> That's just part of it. But here's the wonderful thing, beloved. Listen, that old lox might create some messes once in a while. That old lox might give you a little headache once in a while. But I'll tell you something, that old lox can be used to do a whole lot of good too. And if you don't want the problems of the ox, just get rid of it. I tell you this, I'd much rather have a shovel in one hand, but thank God a full table and full cupboards when that old ox has helped me produce a lot of fruit. I'd much rather have that than to have no ox, no shovel, and no fruits and vegetables either. Right? There's a price to pay. Now some people, some people, I'm talking in spiritual sense here, but some people will never, never, never know the increase of the ox because they'll make excuses of why they can't get an ox. Other people will never know what an ox will do just because they've just decided they're not willing to put up with any problems an ox will bring. Well, the fact of the matter is, beloved, I don't want to make excuses from now till Jesus comes, but rather by the help of God, I'd rather say, let's keep the ox, let's clean the crib. If a person wants to know the temperature, what will he do? He'll get a what? If you want to know the temperature, what will you get? A thermometer, right? If you want to know the temperature, you'll get a thermometer. But if you want to change the temperature, you'll get a thermostat. Because you see, what I don't want to be in my life is a thermometer. I don't want to be the fella that can tell you, oh yeah, yep, yep, that's right, yep, dirty stall right over there. There it is. It's dirty. <laughs> it's dirty. That's a thermometer. I'd rather be a thermostat. And that's the fella, that's the lady, whoever that can say, yes, that stall is dirty. That ox has been over there and made an awful mess. That thing's dirty. But there's a shovel laying over there, and I'll just... Go over there and clean it up. 
That's the thermostat. A thermometer will tell you about the problems, but a thermostat will change it. You know what I'm trying to say tonight, beloved? It is very tempting, for me anyway, I don't know about you, but for me it's very tempting to just say I'll be a thermometer. But I believe the Lord would be honored more if we just be thermostats, right? Keep the ox, clean the crib. So it boils down to a couple of things. Number one, how about around here in this church and in our lives, of course, how about we just say, Lord, remind me that there's a place for me, for you, for all of us. There's a place for you in the Lord's work. Everybody has a place. You know that? Everybody who's saved has a place. And then how about we say, dear Lord, how about give us some oxen, some ministries and works we can do for Jesus. Just some more oxen. <laughs> Somebody said, preacher, we got so much going on as it is, you know, I know. But you know what? Just give us some more oxen because there's much increase by the, reason, by the strength of the ox. And then on top of that, how about while we say, Lord, give us some things to do for Jesus, how about we also say, Lord, give me a shovel. Lord, give me a shovel. Because if I have the ox, somebody's got to clean the crib, right? And I say tonight, let's ask God for some more oxen. I mean, let's ask God to use us. And while we're, we're wanting God and asking God and being willing for God to use us, let's grab hold of the shovels and clean up after the ox when they need to be cleaned up, right? Just roll up our sleeves and say, hey, we're going to keep the ox. Keep the ox and clean the crib. Keep the ox and clean the crib. How many of you understand tonight the principle that we're driving at? Keep the ox and clean the crib. Well, that being said, beloved, here, here's what we've got. We've got shovels. <laughs> or we've got a shovel. <laughs> and I have to be like, I have to do like my Lord told me to do. Put your hand to the plow. Or in this case, grab hold of a shovel and just say, Lord, we want to serve you to our fullest. And when something needs done, I'm not going to wait for somebody else. I'll just jump in and grab the shovel and get it done. Keep the ox and clean the crib. Let's pray together. May we please? Let's pray together. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. And I'm going to lay that shovel right up here as just a little reminder for myself, for my own self, to just keep the ox, clean the crib. In just a moment, we're going to have a time of prayer. I've tried to be a little lighthearted tonight. I've tried to just be encouraging. 